unannounced and unwelcome like herpes, reminding the virgin man of the cruelty of love when falling for a prostitute. They came in great fanfare. Hey, Blondie! The student asked the stranger who seemed to be their leader, Who are you? And in the most contemptible politeness, they all answered in unison, But all stories have a beginning and an end. So let's start by the first chapter of ours. Centuries ago, a student from a temple of cinema shared with his companions his humble opinion about the skills of a trendy fighter acclaimed by the masses. Long story short, the student said that the fighter's qualities were over exaggerated. Eh, I did not say that. I said he wasn't cinematic, he was cinema shit. Hmm. As he was part of a myth devised by promoters in order to boost the memberships of the dojos affiliated to the school of Helios. Most of his pairs refuted him, calling him ignorant, ignorant heretic, and apostate. and apostate. Despite the embarrassment, the student did not change his statements one iota, and for this he knew that a day would come when his enemies would make him pay the price. Then he would have no choice but to fight to defend the reputation of his school. What the fuck was that? Hmm. So I was saying, he will have to fight for his life in this lawless jungle better known as YouTube. Starting by removing all the love and humanity that remained in him to descend into the dark and the cold 35th chamber. Le succès, le succès annule. Il faut refaire. Mieux si on peut. Différemment, la préférence. It was decided that the duel would be between the champion of each camp. The KMZ chose its warrior the Mir 1B, and our student placed his hopes in the SMC Takumar. The fight was tough, long, and uncertain. Most of you, if not all of you, already own the Mir 1B, but we'll still have to talk about the legacy and the history of this lens. So for the history, let's make it quick. 1954, first year of manufacturing of the Mir 1B, with one design dispersor manicus that reduced the vignetting. Based on the Carzes Jena Flectoblone 35, as you already know. 1955, Carzes Company patented the design in the US, but way too late because 1958, tada, Grand Prix de la Foire Internationale de Bruxelles that the Soviet received for the Mir 1B. 1963, Asahi came up with uh, their Super Takumar uh, 35F2, and in 1971, they updated the coating to Super Multi Coated Coating. Now let's get into the subject of the legacy. The Mir 1 fanboy and seller and resellers, they love to mention two things about this lens Dune Partout, and the Grand Prix de la Foire Internationale de Bruxelles de 1958. Oh, but Dune, it's gonna be short. They are unable to mention which part of the movie, which sequence was filmed with the Mir 1B. And about Bruxelles. Now sit tight because it's gonna hurt.
They love to repeat that the Lens won the Grand Prize of Bruxelles in 1958. Okay, now we have the question. Against what? Against which Lens the mirror was competing? I just made a good point, huh? <laughs> okay, now I need you to lock in because it would be a bit confusing. After wasting precious day of my life looking at some archive, I did not find any answer to this question. But I found a few things. There were 3,961 prizes given prizes. at the fair. Mostly medals and some paper like certificate, diploma, stuff like that. Pay attention to the medals. The medals were in gold, silver, bronze, as usual. But all either paper or metal, were called Grand Prix, because Grand Prix sounds nice. You will not say uh, Grand Prix for this one and small prize for this one. Second point. The Soviets never said that the lenses won one prize. They said the lenses were awarded one prize. Big, 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 massive difference. In fact, we don't know how the jury was operating. What was their method, their analysis, their optical comparison, their optical... We don't know. Three. The well-known website archiving the Soviet cameras and lenses has a photo in black and white about the medal received for the mirror. Uh, I don't know if this photo is coming from the Russian authorities, but I do know that it's not the gold one. It's not the master prize. This is the bronze. <laughs> the girl one has the boy uh, mannequin. I forgot the name. You know the one holding his little pipe uh, peeing in the water? Number four. In fact, all the answers are already given in the sentence that the Soviet they use on the Mir 1B. First, they put awarded the, I guess, Grand Prix Prize, Bruxelles, 1958. Then they remove awarded, I guess, and also they remove prize. Removing prize is normal because pre and prize are the same word. But by removing awarded, I guess, you have your answer. It just means that it wasn't the gold. Anyway. Mia 1B still received a prize, so it wins this first round. USSR! Establishing an average price for the 1B can be a bit of a headache. Prices on eBay are starting around $70-$90 and can reach $400 depending on the customization and servicing, which is in itself ridiculous. But the Asahi Super Multicoated Tacoma 35F2, barely touched by the hype, has not the success of the Mir 1B, so its price is slipping quietly in the $100-$150 range since 10 years. Talking about vintage hype, some sellers are claiming that the Asahi is a fantastic lens and a rare model, the best after the 50, yada 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 yada. Bullshit. Not even close. eBay will confirm the availability of the lens, except that the Takuma fans, no one will run after it. And also it's not the best 35 of Asahi. The Mir 1B is a better investment than the TAC because of the hype, but point to the Takuma for the stability of its price. Japan! Round three. I won't insult your intelligence with useless chit chat like there are no electronics in the lenses, there are manual, they are built like a tank, made in 60s, 70s, blah 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 blah. No, let's get serious. First thing first. Aesthetic is a matter of personal test. Okay, but let's be honest, the tack looks better than the mirror, at least younger than the mirror, which is normal as there is one decade of industrial design between these two. And the mirror has its design refreshed in the LED model, so okay. When you hold it, you feel right away that the tack has the advantage at the handling. The tack just feels better, more premium, maybe due to its proportions, but I won't bet on the Japanese if we have to do one crash test. You guys know about the robustness of the Soviets. For the optics, 6 elements, 4 groups for the mirror. 8 elements, 7 groups for the tack. 
meaning that the tax will have better sharpness and less aberration. But does it really matter this day? No. Also, a small detail that has enormous importance for people like us. Call it consistency. The consistency of the Takuma design is a satisfaction in itself. Something that you won't find in the Soviet lenses. So point to the tag for its industrial design. Without any discussion, point to the Mir 1B for its 10 aperture blades. While the super multi-coated Takuma has only 6 blades. That produce without any surprise the classic hexagonal bubbles a la Takuma. I am okay with that, but 10 blades was, is and will always be better than 6. The biggest and perhaps the only flaw of the Takuma compared to the Mir is, in my opinion, the Torium. Some people are avoiding radioactive lenses for safety reasons, I get it. But it's quite surprising considering that as far as we know, no workers, photographers or resellers ever die because of radioactive lenses. As long as it does not destroy the image, I don't have any issue with the Torium, and a bit of golded shed can be nice sometimes. The yellowing one lens is no secret and we know how to fix it in camera and post. Torium is quite a big deal sometimes in terms of image quality, contrast, color popping. But we have to give this point to the mirror for not having any of it. USSR. There are two things that are annoying me with the Mi 1B. This is uh, the same critique than the Helios 44 too, so I might sound like a broken record. The precept aperture mechanism. Some people love it, me, I don't. In fact, the people, they love the stepless uh, adjustment. Anyway, same issue than the Helios. You have to turn it. And when you are using the stepless adjustment, you don't have one clear indication of which aperture you are using. If you have to replicate the one previous shot, good luck. And also the focusing ring that is not large enough and requires one special 3D printed gear. But above all, my main problem with this lens is the proximity of the focusing ring and the stepless ring adjustment. Every time when I try to change the focus, I touch the aperture. And this is one real bummer. Now, honestly, this is uh, while the Takuma has none of these drawbacks, the aperture ring and the focusing ring are well spaced. You have clear marking. The focusing ring is large enough to put all your thumb on it without touching anything. And you can use any gear on it. So, yeah, point to the Takuma. The minimum focusing distance of the mirror can be hacked from 70 to 35 cm. Mine will stay at 70 cm. See, I have a lot of ego, but not enough to think that I know better about optics than the engineers who designed the lens. And I tend to think that we discovered nothing that they did not knew. And they had good reason to set up the MFD at 70 cm. Anyway, just do you and do whatever you want with your lenses. But point to the Takuma for its minimum focusing distance of 40 cm. While we are on the subject, let's talk about the focus throw. The Mir 1B has one focus throw just like the way I love the photo lenses having one focus throw. J just pay attention to the blue stick. L let's turn it, okay? Right now we are on the minimum focusing distance. Let's turn it. Up. 90. Hmm. Let's turn, 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 turn. Ooh, 180. Ooh la 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 la. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Up, around. 270 degrees, degrees of focus of throw. Focus throw. This is one pure pleasure. Not like the Takuma turn. Okay. Okay, let's continue. Finish. From here to here. You have some 180 degrees of focus throw. This is uh, disappointing. USSR. Round six. 
Many Asahi fans have the common opinion that the 35 is getting sharp only at f2.8, and I can confirm it. For Takuma, the 35 is disappointing at f2. It lacks the Asahi sharpness, there are too many fringing near the edges, and the focal reducer just make it worse. Other than that, and except the yellow tint of the Torium of course, there is absolutely nothing to complain about the tack. So much so that some photographers claim that it surpasses the Acclamate Flectogon 35 f2.4. But I have no idea, as I never had my hands on this one. What I can tell is that in terms of image quality from f2.8 to f8, the tack beats the mirror without a sweat. Once the bokeh is gone, both lenses are really, really close. It is hard to differentiate them and to tell which one is better. So right now I am with the super multi-coated Takumar, the aperture is set to f2 and I cannot get one flare. Wow! The mirror won't be aperture set up to f2.8, alright. Not much. Takuma. For me, the stroke filter is a bit useless, except if you have only one point of light. It's not ugly, but uh, you know, this one, yuck, mm, this point here, disgusting. But other than that, I mean, with the with the light, uh, the pink uh, light behind and also the, the blue flaring, it's interesting. Anyway, uh, long story short, this one goes for the Me 1B, for having bigger flare than the Takumar. In fact, uh, the Takumar has almost none. <laughs> F2.8. So the reputation of the mirror is mostly based on its capacity to sweep the background. Yeah, I'm not going to contradict that. Sometimes it can produce one gorgeous bokeh. Can even get la crème de la crème, the paintbrush swirl. But here, a surprise I kept for the hand. So here with the Takuma 35. Just like the 1B, the super multi-coated Takuma share the same optical defect that all you girls are craving. The barrel distortion. Of course, not to the extent of the mirror. Some photographers complained about it, and I don't care, because I found it beautiful. It gives the tag the character that it is lacking. It is not gimmicky as the mirror one. It is more subtle, more delicate. Let's say that the swirl of the tag is quiet. And this is important, considering how swirls and fat depth of fill are overused and abused everywhere. Of course, because of the aperture starting at f2, the Takuma has more room in the bokeh. But we have to give to the 1B what belongs to the mirror. It's swirl. That I just said can sometimes reach one beautiful pen brush effect. f2.8. USSR! But fate is like traitors, it is merciless. The student had no choice but to get into the ring to wash away the affront made by the Takumar, who threw in the towel after being unable to counter the attack of the bokeh whirlwind of the mere 1B. Brothers, today history has chosen you. As witnesses, as guardians of the truth, do you understand the responsibility you bear right now? <laughs> it 
just mean open the camera of your phone. All right? Yes, 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 yes. And don't forget to press record. Can you do that? Yeah? Thank you. Okay, time to conclude this rant. Which one of the two? Uh, this is uh, the wrong question. The question is, which one do you need, when and where? Consider yourself like a painter. Lenses are your paintbrushes, and you need different kinds of brushes to achieve various kinds of uh, subtleties, uh, different kind of effect. So here my take after three months of using these two daily. If you need one clean, vintage look, the Takuma is the best of the two. And if usability is something that you care about, this is this one you should take. But it's offered to not have enough personality, the visual identity department, while the mere one B is the best choice if you need some optical defect to achieve one artistic vintage look. Its chromatic aberration and its swirl will do the job perfectly just fine but only if you have the adequate background for it, with different point of lighting, various kind of shape and color. And this is the whole issue of the Mi 1B. Its quality, the swirl, is in fact its biggest weakness. If you have one just basic background, plain background, nothing fancy, there is no point to take out the mirror from the bag, because everything will look just like I previously said in one video, average and it will not put to shame any Chinese budget 35. The mirror is mostly an outdoor lens that can only mature in a visually complex environment. So anyway, at the end of the day, you do whatever you want with your money. I think we're done now. Yeah. Because a bad conscience is easier to cope with than a bad reputation. Shamelessly, the KMZ clan pulled the guns out of their underwear. Out of politeness, I will let the viewer imagine for himself where the weapons were hidden. Venerunt Viderunt Mortui Sunt They came, they saw, they died. The KMZ clan was wiped out. Although historians failed on purpose to record the fact some men of knowledge knew that somewhere, deep in the realm of YouTube, there was a small dojo with few subscribers and visits, run by a renegade student of cinema. That no one, but no one should mess with. Oh.